Hi, I'm Coach Jesse, and I want to thank you for checking out Training for Warriors. Our program is going to help you make the breakthrough in your health and fitness that you're looking for. But I know that it can be overwhelming or intimidating to get started with the program. Going to a new gym, you don't know what to expect. But the best thing you can do right now is get in contact with our coaches so that we can help you bring out the warrior within. So Jesse, I know you have your own personal journey of overcoming. Would you share that with us? Where do I begin? So um, basically, so with, with my clients, I when they come into my program, I send them some videos that I've recorded where I talk about my story. And um, Christine was watching some of those. And I, and I go over the story where I'm in, um, I was like chemistry or some class in, in junior college. And um, man, it's it, it, basically I, I had some issues like that I had to confront. And, and the first thing I'll say is if you're coming into walls and if you're seeing failure, that's an issue. And like, we all have them. Uh, and I was in a place where it was easier to like ignore them than actually, cause then if you don't, if you don't ignore them, it means you have to address them and not addressing them was really hard. And I felt helpless. Mm -hmm. Um, and so like that was kind of hard, but it's actually a privilege. It's actually an opportunity if you're coming up against that wall, if you're coming up against failure, that's an opportunity to be like, Hey, maybe I kind of suck at this or like, maybe I'm like really challenged at this. And instead of like being in this place where it's like, Oh man, I'm just like that. It's like, well, no, if someone else is successful at all in life, it means it's possible. And if they can do it, I can do it. Mm -hmm. Um, so I say that because what I'm about to tell you, I, for whatever, by God's grace, I came out of this like, woe is me victim attitude and and somehow you know I, I was just willing to see my situation from another angle and I, I did want control I did want to be better so so basically I, just to preface that uh, or to preface it with that what basically one really pivotal moment there's been some very pivotal moments that have been really hard um, one of them I'm, I'm, I'm in my chemistry class and um, I'm like and I was like basically always late and I was late to other classes, you know, and, and I would like, um, I would get in there and like the professor would be like, okay, blah, blah, blah. And he would, I would be like not knowing what he was talking about. It had to do with like some assignment or some way or some method to do something. And we're in the lab portion. Um, and I'm, you're in a group of like four people and there's this guy that was like in our lab group and basically I was like, man, guys, like, what is he talking about? And that guy was like, Hey man, like, you know, if you were here on time, you would know what he's talking about. And it was so, I was offended obviously. Um, and, um, but it was just so rational. It's like, well, you don't know what he's talking about because you weren't here. But if you were here when everyone else normally got here, because that's the class start time, then you would know. And then you wouldn't have to like ask us and you would actually be more self-sufficient. You would be better. And it's actually not that hard to do that. Like you just need to make a shift. Um, that's like how I'm interpreting how simple it was, but yet I was like getting offended by that. But, um, but I knew that he was right and I didn't just, you know, and he was just literally, he wasn't even like my friend or anything like special. It was just like, and it's like, thank God that he was just such a frank person to um, actually, cause what that was is actually an invitation mm -hmm. and it rocked me and I did not see overnight change or anything like that but I was like man he's right so that was not like the origin of like oh my gosh well it was an origin but it wasn't like oh my gosh like I'm just going to instantly be better but really what it served is it really showed me something deeper and it's like you know I really don't have these ducks in a row yeah. I really am not and I basically realized like I'm kind of like ignoring some problems here mm -hmm. and that that was like the birthplace of a new life and that I was probably like 18 or 19 or something when that happened and you know it was still like years of like not having things together and like that's that's like a, a practical like example like being somewhere on time mm -hmm. um there there's so much more to it but like all these realms are connected and it's like well well why wasn't i and like what other things and it's like well if i take that deeper and if i really looked at it 
And if you looked at, if you were following me around with like, you know, a floating camera that followed me and what you would see like objectively, not my story, but like if you saw the real, mm -hmm. um, you would see me up late at night on Netflix, just watching like movies, you know, multiple movies. You'd see me like eating sleeves of Oreos. You'd see me just um, hanging out, avoiding responsibility, mm -hmm. um, taking the easy way out, just kind of like being isolated. And, and it's like, okay, now I'm getting like this, this sugar high. I'm like watching these movies. I'm ignoring going to bed. Um, and you know, I'm like living on my, my own. I was kind of like at this time I was renting a room from a family mm -hmm. and I, I was just in there, you know, like doing, doing the Jesse thing, like being isolated. Um, and it's like, you get the sugar high. So now I'm like not going to go to bed anytime soon. So I got all this glucose pumping through my veins, keeping me energized and awake. Also, you're getting the, 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 the imagery and that's stimulating your brain and you're getting sucked into like a movie or a show and you're getting like all hyped up. So I, you know, you don't go to bed and eventually you give up the fight and you go to bed at two, three, four AM, you know, whatever time. And then you wake up late feeling like garbage because your body is just like went through this crazy like energetic thing that throws off your normal rhythms and then you're like asking yourself to perform at work or be somewhere on time or and it's like no wonder I wasn't patient or no wonder I was like you know brash with with someone or saying something I didn't mean to because my body was in this place of not being healthy and so like there, I, I started to like kind of realize like, well, here's like, duh, my life is way out of whack because I'm like, have all these bad habits. And then it wasn't for a while. I started to figure out where some of those bad habits were coming from. And like, well, why was I, you know, sabotaging my, my time in my life? And I mean, that, that took me into probably like 2017, 2018 is realizing like, you know, Hey, like sonship and you are a son of, of God. And like, you don't have to live like this way of, of weakness and you are actually something. And this is every created person, you know, is, ha can transcend, can become new. So that was like later, but for me, that was kind of like the wake up call. And then I think from there, it kind of like opened up this portal into a new way of looking at my life that, Hey, I don't have it all together. And that, that is humility. That is saying, you know, Hey, I'm actually, I thought I was here, but I'm actually here. And now that I'm here, because if I'm here, then I don't need to grow because I'm already where I'm at. And that was a lie. That was a story I was telling myself. But when I started to get off the throne of my life and, and come down here, then I could actually make change. And then I didn't have to lie. I didn't have to put a, on a show about, what I wanted to be, I was actually, and it kind of sucks, like being like, oh, I'm actually here. Uh, and, and everyone looking at your life, like, or anyone that's close or anyone that's looking honestly, they, they probably can see through the, the show. Um, and so it's like, we don't really, there's no reason to not um, just be humble about it. Um, but anyway, that, that, it wasn't like about being late. Like that actually was a very big thing, but it, the real growth for me was just humility. Like, Hey man, like look honestly at your life because from there, that's when some of these bigger things I got in, put in a position for some of these bigger things to just move around. Um, yeah. I had a similar, um, I had a similar point at the beginning when my seizures began I had to look at my life. I thought I was in a good place. I thought that things were going in the right direction. Yeah. I, there are all these thoughts that I had, which were positive, and I was really just lying to myself. I had mastered self-deception. It was incredible. And wow. one of the first things that I had to say was, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong about everything I think. Maybe I'm wrong about who I am. Maybe I'm wrong about who God is. Maybe I'm wrong about my purpose and my identity. I didn't know all those words, but that's really what it came down to. Maybe I'm right, wrong. Right. And just being able to say that, maybe I'm wrong. It just opens this door wide open to be able to question and look at all these different beliefs that we have, where we are making all these decisions based off of our beliefs. It's incredible. You know, when you say that, Christine, so like you, what you have come out of, it's like, is a totally different thing. Like, man, having like seizures and like having like this thing, because in my mind, I'm like, that's like out of 
control, like, like that's out of your control. Like what can you do about that? Like the easy thing is let me just like kind of sub cause our mind wants to take the path of least resistance. It's like a survival built in like thing. And it's like, let me just conserve energy. Let me avoid anything difficult. Like we, ha- as humans, like, I think that's like lesson number one is, Hey, like it's going to get messy. It's got to get real. And you're, you're going to naturally want to take the path of least resistance. And so like for you to have, cause like in my mind, like listening to you, I'm like, Oh my gosh, like, you know, you've had a story of transformation, but what you came out of was like, geez, like, what do you do about that? Like you're having these, you're having these seizures and, and it, I know that you have a different perspective on this. It does have to do with trauma. It does have to do with stress levels. It does have to do with the story we're telling ourselves. You know, there's can be a spiritual and emotional side. It's not just like a medical side, but at first glance, I'd say, Oh man, that's like a medical issue. Like, what are you going to do? But you said, Hey, it, well, even if you can't, it's almost like maybe if I can't change it, I still like, this is still giving me a wake up call. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's, that's what you did. And that's like that warrior attitude is like, well, I, I've got to do something. Um, this isn't working. Whatever's going on isn't working. And, and I, and I think that's what we, that's a similarity. And like, even though you have a completely different, like you came out of like this almost medical symptom thing. Um, whereas what I'm talking about is a little different. And, and, and then whoever's watching this, like, wherever you're at or whatever you're coming out from it, it might be like a totally unrelated thing, but it is related in the sense of like, Hey, I need a new perspective and I'm the one that has to make that decision. I'm the one that takes responsibility for my life. Mm -hmm. Like it it has to be me. Like it cannot be someone else. Mm -hmm. The, the, and, and then if I can just branch off into this, that is a scary thought because we, who am I to like manage? Who am I to actually bring strength or restoration? And I mean, I think that's where I've really gotten deeper in my relationship with God. I always knew that God was real, but it's like, I'm at this point where this thing is so unchangeable. And it's like what every, every single thing I've tried is like not working. Um, what do I do? And it's like, well, I, I feel like, I feel like for some reason I can break out of this, but I don't know how. And that's where it's like, well, let me just lean on the one that created all the trees and the air you breathe and the cosmos we live in and who said this is right. And this is wrong. Like this, um, father, this creator, um, let me, let me lean into him. And like there, we, we deal as humanity. It's funny because we deal with problems bigger than ourselves. And we have to, it's this interesting balance between like, no one's coming to save me. I have to make a change, but that doesn't mean I do it by my own strength. That just means I have to take responsibility for this, but I can actually be empowered in my weakness by the one who loves me. And that is Christ. Um, You know, growing up, I would read in the scripture or hear about like, you know, why does Paul like boast in his weakness? Like I'm trying to like hide my weakness, but he got to this point and I feel like this is true. Like transcendence. It's like, he got to this point where he's like, Hey, I have this addiction. Hey, I have this problem. And I love it. This is great. Because in that, in that weakness, he was able in those ashes was where this new birth was coming from. He saw Christ's strength coming through in his weakness, because if I'm strong all the time, there's no place for a supernatural strength to come in. So it's actually in our weakness that a greater power. And and so what I'm saying is in our weakness, that is a a place where we get to meet the creator. That is a place where we get to harness strength and see new outcomes, not on our own strength, but as we lean on the strength of the creator. And ultimately that's kind of where my story led me to. It's like, there was no other way. If I hadn't met God, there would, there would be no training for warriors like Mary. There would be no coach Jesse. There would, we would not know each other. Uh, and, and likewise for you, I know you would say the same thing about your story. So, you know, a lot of people are, um, you know, and I've been afraid to talk about God and, and it's all just such a lie. It's like, he's real. Like look around you, like where did this place come from? Mm-hmm. Um, it's like, man, it, it, it's insane. Like, you know, we, we, um, and I'll, uh, you know, and I, I, because, Hey, there's been times where I've 
I, I'm like, how could there be a God? You know, I, I've asked, and because like, I have faith because I've asked those questions. Yeah. I have the faith I have now. I'm like, man, like, why do I believe in this? Is this just something like how I was raised? Like, is God really real? You know, and, and I, I really looked at that. And, you know, I think biologically, there's just such a, like, I, I don't see how these things could exist without the existence of, it, of a, an author. But, but the, the places our soul travels in this life, man, I mean, God really is, is the only answer. I mean, that's the only solution. That is the only um, really thing that gives us context to our story. And, and yet he's given us tools. Like we actually can see a lot of success, not like without him, but because of him, because innately, like one of our greatest strengths is the ability to take on responsibility and take on um, and say, Hey, I, I need to change my ways, you know? Um, yeah. So yeah. That's yep. a big part of it. I was thinking about that when you were ta telling your story. For me, I, I also knew God from a very young age. I knew of his existence. I'd never questioned. But it took me into my late 30s to actually have that, have that relationship because yeah. I believed this lie that God wanted nothing to do with me. And wow. it was sad and scary growing up all by yourself and thinking that God abandoned you and having all these things that happen in your life, which support this belief, this lie that God abandoned you. And so I would never have thought in a million years to mm. engage with him. But that day when I questioned everything, when I put everything I believe, oh. put it out on there and just that God, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I might be wrong. I might be wrong. I could be wrong about everything. There's probably a lot that I'm wrong about. And I'm still wrong about a lot. <laughs> so I'm not there yet. But I remember that day where that invitation to say, God yeah. proved me wrong. It was a God proved me wrong. So just that that little, it wasn't anything flowery, anything spectacular, yeah. some lofty prayer. It was, I might be wrong. So God, if I'm wrong, you know, prove me wrong. Wow. That's great. Yeah. And what, what a gift, what a gift that was. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we, we think, we think that humility and stuff is painful and it, it's only painful to like our formal, our former self, you know, mm -hmm. but it's actually just a birthplace of change. It is a cradle of, of new life. Um, and, and, and like, I, I think we avoid it because we think it's disempowering and in a sense it is, it disarms mm -hmm. your, crappy version of yourself that's authoring the lie it and it, it's only painful to like that side of you yes. um yeah I, I just try you know but but it is but for that reason when we're living out of that story that's why a lot of stuff has to happen or we have to hit rock bottom or some kind of black and white like really hard moment leads us finally to that point and then even then it's maybe not like a smooth, <laughs> a smooth path. I know for me it wasn't. Um, and I've had, I, I, I feel like I've had several of those moments, um, you know, or, or those types of things where that, you know, oh, where something gets I'm shut off. There, yeah. Every time I think I'm there, it's <laughs> this wake up call. Like, no. Yeah. I'm so blessed in my life to have people who are in their, their later portion of their life and they've known God for a long time. They haven't had the turbulence. Wow. And as I have had and they will say to me Christine I'm not there yet I'm not done God is still working on me and I can't tell yeah. you the gift that was to hear that to hear somebody who's only almost 70 years old say to me I'm not there yet God is still working on me I'm still going through the same thing that you're going through I've just been doing that for longer so it's a process and the wholeness you know that's the gift of the process is we are getting whole so it's this beautiful thing. And that encouragement, oh my goodness, it, that are we there yet ended that day when I heard somebody else say, no, you're not going to be there. I'm, mm. it was such a gift. It is. Yeah. It's comforting. Yeah. Yes. So Jesse, uh, you had said something before about ground zero being a great place. Could you, could you uh, say that again? Because I just absolutely love, I love that. Yeah and about how staying on the course is virtuous. I mean, just okay. encouraging. So, yeah, we, we you know, 
we're talking about this, and that seems to be the ongoing theme here is just this, there's, there's this war between, Hey, I got it figured out. And like, Hey, no, you don't. And it's like, look, if I showed up at your life and followed you around and I was an objective viewer, Mm -hmm. like what would that story tell me? Mm -hmm. Um, I I was going to, one, one thing I was thinking of is, is, um, you know, like what would be a self-assessment of, Hey, where am I at? And maybe we'll get into this, but I was just going to say this in the fitness realm, but this is just a symbol for our whole life. But in the fitness realm, if I'm afraid to step on the scale, I'm basically, what I'm saying is, Hey, I know the numbers don't lie, but that, but if if I saw what was really there, that hurts me. Mm -hmm. And I just don't want to look at it. That's not right. That's a problem. That's like saying, you're seeing what you're on a boat and water is coming in and you're saying, no, it's not. It's like, no, the water is coming in. And as it keeps coming in, the boat's going to sink. Like it's not going to start pumping itself out. Like if you're seeing symptoms, they're coming from somewhere. If you see a storm coming and like, you're like, Oh my gosh, that looks like a tornado. And you just like close the blinds. It doesn't solve the problem. It's like, no. So we have to be able to embrace. And the reason why this is important it, and what we we're talking about is like when you fall down, like when you get humble, when I get to the point where I'm like, man, I don't have it figured out or in my business, I've been on my knees and like, I feel like this is where I, like I kind of mentioned, man, I did not know I, I was a trainer and I was like, I'm going to open a business. And because I had such a big vision for it, cause I, cause at my last job, I like had just this vision. I was like, man, we need a nutrition solution. We need to like talk about the mind. We need to like, you know, network with people that are physicians or chiropractors or understand like the counseling and like this whole side of the psyche and like and like this has been my vision uh, and like right now we're seeing this happening with, with our our network um which is just incredible and like i have been clawing at like this vision for like literally ever since ever since i started in the realm of of, of fitness and, and transformation so even back then I just had like this vision and it wasn't so like defined as it is now. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but, but I've been looking for like, okay, there's so, there's like a whole, a holistic, there, there's this entire picture with these moving parts. There's a big picture here. And I've been so clawing at that. And then it's like trying to work on it though. I'm like, man, I don't know where to begin. And, and everything was so beyond me mm-hmm. and running a business and coaching and trying to be a, good husband and just, you know, all the other things that I'm like juggling, I was just like, I am beyond myself. Like in order for this to happen, like my ability stops here, like where, so it's like, okay, well I need to grow. I need to change. And so when I actually look at the number, like maybe I step on the scale or maybe I look and say, Hey, this, this, like you can't coach 6am classes if you're going to stay up to 11, 12 at night. Um, like those two things cannot coexist. Mm. they're, they're going to break or like you can't grow if you're not willing to have someone else do this portion of the business and you need to like, let get your hands off the reins, like whatever it is, sacrifices have to be made. And so it just in life in general, um, when I get to these honest raw moments, which are totally a gift and it's almost like that building, whatever structure is there, when it gets bulldozed, I'm at ground zero. I'm like, okay, I, I actually am empty. I actually don't have ability here or whatever ability I have is like kind of like nothing or like I'm actually just broken. Like, don't be scared of that. Like that is ground zero. It's like, you're looking at this pile of rumble rubble that is your mess. Your, it is your inability it is you, but that is actually because what was there, what just got torn down in your moment of humility or in your mindset of humility was a fake version it was an unable unable um lie or it wasn't real it was built on me trying to fit into things it was built on things that people had spoken over me or criteria of life that i thought was important that isn't um or false expectations like it was this whole structure is my life built on these fake things Mm -hmm. so when that gets torn down now it's this ground zero and everyone looks at that thinking like, oh, I don't want to go there. It's like, no, you do want to go there because now you have this fertile soil to build something beautiful. 
So it's like, man, I really want this cool tower and I need a ground zero. I need to totally demolish. So this ground zero idea, it is, it, it is what we need to get to. Um, and, and we ha- we can't just act like it. We can't just flirt with it. It has to be real. And if it's not painful, it's not real. If it's not scary, it's not real. It's like that ground zero, it, it, maybe it looks a little bit different or people get there in different ways. Um, but either way, it is a beautiful a beautiful place because it offers the new growth and the new, the, a new structure to be built. And you are a living testimony of that, Christine. I know some of your viewers are as well. And that's what people are trying to get to. And this is the path. This is what it looks like. My life is a testament, testament to the same idea that, Hey, when you get to ground zero, when you get to rock bottom, that is when the real you has a chance to come out. Like, why is that so hard to believe? We see this in movies all the time, character development, you know, Lion King I was watching recently. I love it. It's like, <laughs> you know, like, like we see this all around us. It's like, Hey, people live a fake version. People live an in incomplete version. Um, and it's that moment of clarity where you can actually come, step into who you really are. Mm. That is so true. And I love how you were talking about that, how it happens throughout your life. So we come up against something and we realize that we're not equipped for it or the skill set that we've been using to accomplish a certain purpose or goal, it's not healthy. It's not healthy to get to A to B. We're really mm. skimming the surface of what we need to do. We really need to say, okay, I'm not doing this well. Maybe it's our schedule. Maybe it's our self-care. Maybe it's our sleep. Maybe it's our nutrition. I mean, it's just all these different components that we have to look at and say, okay, what's next? My favorite thing right now is to say, listen, we have lots of choices. If you don't know about choose your own adventure stories, oh, I love them. Mm. From a young age, I remember reading them. And you get to a point in the story and you get to choose. Now they have video games where it's similar to that. My son plays a game called Minecraft and they have it's story mode. So they get to a certain point mm. and you get to choose what's next. And it's just, it's such an amazing thing because that's life. We get to choose. We come to a, a fork in the road and we have to choose our path. So the that's encouragement cool. here is make a choice, make a choice and move forward. Let's just go. Wow. That's really, that's cool. I like, yeah, I like that. That's like thinking about like in, in the video game, for example, or in the story where you get, you get your own input. Like the story is not like written already. You know, it's not like, like, like from that perspective of, Hey, like your volition is a big part of how this thing is going to go. Absolutely. And if you haven't been making choices, if you've just been letting things slide, mm-hmm. um, you can make some choices. That's, that's really great. Wow. And they're just little things. I mean, sometimes they're big, they're massive and but yeah. sometimes they're little. I mean, we come across things that we're not good at every day. Maybe it's, you know, something as we might think as insignificant as our, our cooking skills. You know, all we need to do to change the course is make one choice. And maybe it's a YouTube video that we start watching about cutting techniques or better nutrition. I mean, there's so many resources out there. It's about just choosing one of them and going. I, I, I have found as, as far as the great encouragement right now is just choose anything. Anything is better than the path that you're on. Anything is better than stuck. Jesse, first of all, I want to thank you for sharing your testimony of, of transformation and just your very keen perception of what it takes in order to go from where you're at right now to success. And I thank you especially for helping us to redefine what fit is. That was very impactful for me. So thank you. If somebody wants to get in touch with you, how can they do that? So yeah, absolutely. Um, Our gym is in Lake Mary, Florida, training for warriors, Lake Mary. Uh, The website is tfwlakemary.com. Hi, I'm Coach Jesse with Training for Warriors in Lake Mary. Here, our mission is to help people become stronger, not just here at the gym, but in their entire lives. And, you know, if someone's interested in, hey, like, I want to achieve this fitness outcome, um, you know, it depends on where you want to go. Uh, our coaching is customized to your, you know, fitness is not a cookie cutter thing. So the, the best thing to do is let's get on the phone and let's talk you know, about what you want to see happen. And 
And if what you want to see happen is in our wheelhouse, you know, we can definitely help you make a really clear plan on how to get there. And we have seen the most incredible things happen with people in all different starting places. So don't let that discount you from even trying or starting. Um, the best thing you can do is uh, let's get on the phone. Let's talk. Uh, I would love to schedule a call with you and let's just see what, what you want to see happen. So again, it's tfwlakemary.com. Thank you so much. And thank you for joining us today. I hope that you got some really great pearls of wisdom from this. This okay. has been great. All right. Bye.